forth and they're talking about the things. And everybody's interested about getting to the, yes, yeah, get to the things. Quit telling me how to get my life in order and get to the things. How do I get the stuff? Well, you got to do what I just said prior. Amen? <laughs> Amen. Before I get into that, I want to first get us to acknowledge that many of us in this building have already received the best promise ever given in His Word. Amen. And it came after the invitation to come. Come to Jesus. By coming to Jesus, by accepting the call to come to Him, we made Him our Lord. We made Him our Savior. We made Him our God. He filled us with His Spirit, and if we yield to His Spirit, He gives us a lifestyle to live that becomes so attractive that somebody approaches you on your job and says, what must I do to be saved? He didn't just save us for us and our, our family. He saved us for others. Yes, it starts in our home, but it spreads off as to a many and four off as the Lord thy God shall call. So he saved us to be these living examples, these written epistles that we can live before a man. And if they never pick up a Bible, they can read about Jesus through your life. Amen? He has called us to be earthly representatives representatives of his kingdom. Amen? Amen. Amen. We are to make the kingdom of God attractive. Amen. So let, 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 let's, let's look at this invitation real quick. I want you to turn your Bibles to Matthew 11. Yeah. I need two and the 28 brothers that have been in this ministry less than two years. Two brothers that have been in this ministry less than two years. You too strong. Sit down. <laughs> That's on my channel. <laughs> Give me a man right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. I need you. Just need me a small brother. You work, man. You cut me up. That's my, that's my dude right here. Okay. Can you hold this mic for me? Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn. Now what a yoke is, this is a, it's a it's an instruction uh, device that they use that they placed upon oxen to teach younger ox how to walk. Amen? Mm -hmm. I'm the head ox, alright? Okay. Come on, come on, my God. Come on. This yoke right here is real heavy. It got, I got some stuff that I'm pulling on it behind me, right? right. But for their sake, I'm going to make it real light. Can you feel that for real? Okay. It's real light. And all they got to do, I make it real easy on them. All they got to do is follow my lead. Walk with me. They don't have to make no heavy decisions. They don't have to worry about if I'm going to turn right or turn left. All they have to do is follow. How many of you know that I'm not just talking about no ox? I'm talking about that God has placed us an earthly representative down here. And he has yoked up with us. He said, all you got to do is walk with me. If you want to learn how to prosper, walk with me. If you want to learn how to have a good marriage, walk with me. If you want to learn how to be all make this thing hard. We make it harder than what it has to be. All we have to do is walk in obedience. We ain't got to be sitting up here puzzling out with which way we going to go. Or I don't understand why we going this way. All you got to do is walk. You don't even have to have your, they even have to have their eyes open. I had them. Walk by faith and not by sight. That's all you have to do. Just that simple. Why do we make it so much harder? I don't understand why we got to do it like that. We didn't do it like that at my old church. You ain't at your old church. You left your old church. So if it was working that good for you at your old church, why you ain't still there? I never came into this ministry trying to bring everything that I, that I thought I knew and everything that my old church did. I never brought that. That was for that house. My job was to come here, get deliverance, learn the laws of this house, and walk by faith and not by sight. Not to tell, no, no, Bishop, this is the way you ought to do it. Now, it's good if you have advice or whatever, but if you just came in here, sit down. We don't care how you think it should be done. This way has been working for a long time. And God ain't finished with us yet. Give God a shout of praise. First 
lady often makes the invitation, and you heard Elder Courtney make the presentation today. She makes an invitation to come on in where the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on. And we may, if we don't find, be careful, we can find ourselves becoming so used to going through the motions and saying that, saying that, and it really don't mean anything to us. But that is a great invitation. To be invited to the king's table. Melchizedek, uh, which was the son of Jonathan, grandson of King Saul, David made a covenant with Jonathan that if anything happened, that he would take care of his own. We know David, he was a mighty warrior. He went through many fights and many battles, but he had a time where he could make a pause between wars and say, is there anybody from the house of Saul that I may show love to me, I may show some gratitude to. Now, all the sons, Saul, son, most of the sons, Saul, son, Saul's sons got killed. They died with him, as Jonathan did. But one of them escaped, they were taken away, and he was lame in his feet. But when David found out that there was one left from the house of Saul, he said, bring him here. And he came, and he brought him, and he said, I'm going to give back to you all the land of your father, and you going to sit at my table Every day. Always. You're going to sit right here at my table. Now it's one thing to be a citizen of a, a kingdom, of a great prosperous kingdom. But it's another thing to sit at this table. You see, we don't really understand that because we got a president. But just look at it this way. There's many of famous people that have made a trip to the White House. And have met the president. And have sat down and supped with the president. But at the end of that day, they got to go home. You ain't staying up in here. Matter of fact, the president ain't guaranteed no more than four years up in there. But to be invited to the king's table is an invitation that says, I accept you as one of my sons. Now, in the kingdom, a citizen can be partaker of the benefits of the kingdom, but a son has an inheritance of the kingdom. Amen? Total big difference. So he offered him an invitation to the table and he said, just like I would say, who am I yeah. that you would cheat, choose me? Yeah. But it wasn't because of what he had done. It was what his father had done that he was being blessed through this covenant. God is calling us to the king's table. Come on in where the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on. He said, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will open up, I will come in and sup with you. You can have dinner today with the king. Amen? Amen. 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 Ain't nothing lacking in the kingdom. God's desire is for us to become part of his welfare program. That nigga say welfare, huh? I'm trying to get up off welfare. This nigga talking about getting on welfare. Did I say that? I'm sorry. Excuse me. That's the hood coming out of me. But anyway. <laughs> anyway, bleep that out. <laughs> He wants us to become a part of his welfare program. Let me explain. In the United States of America, it's looked as if you, you have to get on welfare. It's looked as if you don't have enough to meet your needs. So they place you on welfare. That's in the United States, in a kingdom, in a successful kingdom. It is every citizen's goal and dream to be on welfare. Why? Because that's just what it means. To be on welfare in the kingdom means that that kingdom is prospering and you fare well. Living off the benefits of the kingdom. So God is calling you into his kingdom. He's saying leave off, live off my providential care. I want you to live off of me. I got, you see, in the United States, the, our system is set, set up on not having enough. But in the kingdom, it's set up on having more than enough. I got more than enough in my bank account that I can share with my brother and my sister. I got more enough in my bank account that I can pay somebody else bills. I got more enough in my account that I, I got more than enough. It's overflowing and everybody around me is blessed just because I'm blessed. That's the invitation that we receive when Jesus said, come. I'm calling you not just into citizenship. It's good to be a citizen of the kingdom. But God is saying, I call you into sonship. 
As many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And it ain't a gender thing. Women, you sons too. Sons of the Most High King. Amen. God is calling us into a deeper relationship. God is never saying, okay, stay right there where you at. Be consistent where you Be complacent right there where you at. God is always calling for more. He's always pulling for more. He's always calling for you to come forth. Never to draw back, but to come forth. He has no pleasure in the drawback spirit. He says advance forth in the kingdom of God. Amen.